Welcome to my channel. I'm Danny Walker. Today's episode is the Miss Universe Philippines 2021 recap. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel and you want to see more content like this, then don't forget to do so as well as hit that notifications bell. Thank you so much to all of you who have been so patient for this episode. I had a family emergency and I had to take care of that and that's the reason that I haven't been able to create videos recently, but I really appreciate all of your thoughts and your prayers and all of your understanding. And with that being said, let's get right into this episode. The first thing that I want to make notice of is the beautiful photography and videography footage that we saw at the beginning of the show of the contestants on the beach. I thought that that was gorgeous and what a beautiful way to open up this year's competition. During the opening number, there were a few contestants that visually stood out to me for their styling. They were Katrina, Steffi, Loren, Vinci, Jasmine, and Beatrice. I really like that during the show we got to hear a little bit more about the contestants in their own words when they walked across the stage. I thought that was a very nice touch for the production. I also really love when we get to see last year's title holders a part of this year's show. I thought that was great that they were working as the backstage commentary and host for the show. I want to see more of that in the future for any pageant organization. I had a few contestants that were my favorites for the top 16. The first I'm gonna mention is Kisses. Now, if you've been following the competition, it's no surprise that she was in the top 16 because of the fan vote. Now, regardless of that fan vote, I do still believe that she could have gotten into the top 16 on her own merit, so I do want to note that. Maureen, beautiful, gorgeous. She had a great walk, and I think that she looked like a model, but I do wish that we would have seen a more glamorous side of her. I think she's been really consistent in her styling, but I wanted to see a different look for finals. Christelle had great energy for me in the swimsuit competition, and I really appreciated that, and also I can really see how much she's grown since last year, so I was excited for her. Jasmine, oh my gosh, she looked so cool, calm, and collected. I love that she was working it. She was just owning the runway, and that's why she was one of my favorites. Victoria has been one of my favorites throughout the competition, but for this particular walk, I thought it was very reserved. So I actually wanted to see a little bit more fierce or a fiery performance from her for this swimsuit competition. But regardless of that, still one of my top picks for swim. Katrina here was effortless, easy, sexy, great facials, nailed all of her poses. That obviously for me, quick pass to a top five. Steffi, I thought for final swim, killed it. I think this was my favorite performance that I've seen from her from the entire competition. She was just oozing with confidence. I love Loren. I think that she is such a great competitor, but I think that since she followed Steffi during the competition, that her energy didn't quite match up. So she just looked really low energy here. I wish I would have seen her push this performance a little further. Beatrice immediately made an impression for swim because of that one piece and that cape. It was a powerful dominating force on stage that I could just feel. She also did that Pia power stance for swim like Pia did at Miss Universe when she won. But of course we cannot forget her face for this competition. She has a beautiful face in images, but on stage especially, that is something that is a great asset for her that draws your eye to her. Thank you to Miss Universe Philippines for thanking the designers of these beautiful works of art that the contestants wear on stage. I love that they featured all of them and gave them a shout out and a thanks. I think that the designers and their entire teams deserve it because it takes countless hours to create these beautiful gowns that make these contestants shine on stage. My first favorite for a gown was Kisses. This to me was the best I have ever seen her look throughout this entire competition. Whenever she wore her hairstyle down, I thought oftentimes there was too much volume, but the hair was perfect with this gown. The fit of it, the way that she carried it, how it hugged her body, her poses, her walk, everything was elegant about this and she became a huge favorite of mine after this performance and honestly I could have seen her in a top five. Maureen, girl, all I have to say is those hips don't lie. My gosh, you have so much swag when you walk on stage and I am here for it. I love that about this performance. Jasmine was dreamy in this white ostrich feather gown. It was perfect for her on stage to complement all of her darker features. And it was just, 
It was just so elegant. It just goes to show how difficult this year's competition was. Once again, I love Victoria, but I do think that this gown hindered her walk for the evening gown competition. Still one of my favorites, but that's just something to note for contestants in the future. This particular style that's very, very narrow with those side slits are just difficult to walk in because the fabric wraps around your ankles when, when you walk in it, if it's a very heavily beaded style. So just something to think about. Maria, I am obsessed with this gown obsessed with it it was gorgeous on stage it was gorgeous on her the only thing i would like to see more of is her switching up her facials during this performance katrina's performance for me was solid and when you think about her in her entirety of the entire competition it's very easy to see why she was getting into a top five and moving forward she would be a very solid choice for the judges to give a great score to to see her again later in the competition I love Steffi, you guys know that I do. And she looked beautiful in this gown. The, the gown was gorgeous, the styling was beautiful. She's always gonna be stunning and the performance was there. But I felt that this gown fell short for me when I'm envisioning Miss Universe Philippines. I don't know if you guys felt the same, but I, I know that there's some gowns that I believe are great for red carpet events or photo shoots and then others that really just scream queen on stage. And I wasn't getting that vibe from this gown. Loren was gorgeous in this gown. She immediately stands out. You just look at her waist and her figure. It's incredible. But I think that she played it too safe for this performance. I think that she could have gotten a little bit more creative with her posing at the end. Beatrice, the first thing I noticed, even before she really walked the runway, was her initial pose. She was one of the few contestants that we saw that was ready to go. She was already in position. Then when it was her turn, we got to see her start that walk. The walk to me was fashion and honestly her jawline and the way that her hair was styled straight to really showcase that was perfect. And I, I was just amazed at how stunning she actually looked on stage. Cause she's always been one of my faves. If you guys have watched any of my other favorites episodes, I featured her, I think in every single one of my other favorites episodes. But this performance right here for me, makes it very obvious why she moved to the top five. Next, the top 10 were given the opportunity to answer an onstage question, so I'm gonna discuss my favorites. Loren was asked about what tech innovation has helped her to promote her advocacy, and she had a solid and sincere answer. She was very well prepared for this, and I love that. She did not seem thrown off by this question, and I think because of the way that it was phrased, it could have thrown off many contestants that weren't prepared to actually talk about the work that they've done with their advocacy. Kisses was asked about being a miracle baby and how it's affected her life. And what I loved about this answer was not only was it well stated, but she had so much joy in it. So once again, when I heard this answer, I was kind of surprised not to see her as someone placing in the top five. I feel like she could have made it or she would have been right on the edge. Victoria was asked about being an advocate for heritage conservation and how is this beneficial? And her answer and the way that she answered it was perfect. She said it with ease. So for me, because of how strong she's been for this entire competition, I thought she was an easy pick for a top five. Katrina was asked what advice she would give to a young girl who doesn't have strong female role models in her life. And I loved her answer. She talked about that if you don't have those strong female role models in your own life, like your mother or your grandmother, then you can go out and find them. And so that one day when you do find that role model that you can end up being a role model for other girls in the future. And it was, it was beautiful. I loved it. it gives me chills. Maureen was asked if it's more fulfilling to be a model or a beauty queen. And she really saw an opportunity here in this question and used it to share an inspiring message in her answer. And for me, that is what sold it. And it just gave me such faith in her speaking abilities. Beatrice for me and her speaking abilities is something else that inched her closer to that top five. But I want to talk about something that I would like to see change in the pageant industry. So she was asked a question and the way that it was phrased was something like, do you think the Philippines are ready to send an LGBTQIA plus contestant to the Miss Universe competition? So when you're asking a contestant a personalized question that's directed towards them and something that's personal to them, and when you phrase it in 
this way, it doesn't really give the contestant any place to go. So of course, with this answer, if I were her, I think if any contestant were in her shoes, they would say, well, of course, I think that we're ready to send a LGBTQIA plus contestant to the Miss Universe competition, right? So I am not a fan of questions phrased like that. It's just like if we asked a contestant who was an athlete, do you think that the athletic industry is ready for more females in positions of leadership? Well, of course, of course she's gonna advocate for that. If we're gonna talk about personalized questions like this, if you're gonna be judging in the future, or if you're a director, please read over these questions and give the contestants a little bit more room to answer something creatively. So, you know, if I were rephrasing the last question, we might instead say something like, how do you believe women in sports can advocate for one another so that we can see more women in positions of leadership in the future? So with a question like that, like that, you have more room to share whatever you wanna share, but we're not just immediately putting a contestant in some sort of a box because if you think about it, what contestant, like Beatrice, for example, I mean, do you really think that she would say, no, I don't think that we're ready to send an LGBTQ I a plus contestant to Miss Universe, she would be crazy to say no, right? So I just think that the phrasing of a question is so important in pageantry. And I would encourage you if you're gonna be a judge or if you're a part of an organization to think about the phrasing so then contestants really have an opportunity to voice any opinion instead of immediately sort of narrowing the options for them. Aside from that personal preference, I think that she did great. I think that she spoke really well. The other thing I wanna note is that the host mentioned that she would already be advancing throughout the competition. He was like, well, you'll be advancing in the competition. I don't know if you guys saw that or caught that. I, I don't know what that was. Maybe that was um, an editing error, just like how we looked at last year's pageant, how they pre-filmed everything and they filmed multiple outcomes. I mean, maybe that's why the host said that, but I thought it was sort of a strange thing to say before the announcement of the top five, mentioning that she would advance. And uh, well, I hope you're ready because you are continuing on in this pageant. Is that just me or did, I don't know, I could be wrong, did I miss something? <laughs> now, as we know, public speaking is a very important part of any competition, but it also carries over into the interview. So. Are you someone who's preparing for a pageant? If so, check out Rehearsed to Relatable. It is a course dedicated to helping title holders and contestants stand out in the interview room. If you wanna learn more, click the description below. Now let's talk about the top five. Things really got shaken up here for me. So when we talk about Steffi's answer, they were asking her, how will you empower young women and help them to become more socially aware? I felt that here she immediately became overwhelmed and I was like, oh no, oh no. She made this a question addressing social media instead of actually focusing on women empowerment. And I think that this is exactly why she placed where she did. Beatrice was asked if during her reign, something makes her very sad, how will she continue to inspire others? Now she spoke very well, but she wasn't very specific on how she will inspire others. She essentially just said that she would continue to rise to the occasion and be inspirational. Katrina was asked, what is the most inspiring quality of a Miss Universe Philippines title holder? And her answer was something I hear a lot. She mentioned relatability and compassion, which are both really important things, but like I said, it's just something that we hear a lot. And I think that she was doing really well until the end where she said, so there you go, compassion. And I was just like, when you're in that top five, I feel like you need such a strong ending to your answer, such a strong, confident ending. And I felt like that really hurt her placement because suddenly she didn't sound as confident. She sounded like she was second guessing her own answer in that moment. Victoria was asked about her Miss Universe Philippines journey and what was the most inspiring part. And she said that she's grown up and she's been very privileged in many ways, but it was really smart that she brought everything back to her advocacy and helping Filipinos. I thought that was really, really smart. And honestly, it's a, it's a phenomenal answer. Maureen was asked if she were to win, how will you inspire other women to get out of their comfort zone? She talked about how she was getting outside of her comfort zone by competing in the pageant and that she hopes to inspire so many to achieve their dreams and to reach for the universe. But essentially, once again, she was answering of what she hoped to do and not really identified how she's going to achieve it. 
quick mention of Rabia though in her final gown. Oh my gosh, why was this not one of her Miss Universe options? I loved it so much. I could even see it without the cape. It was just incredible on her. Now, after this, we had the announcement of the placements. So second runner up was Steffi, which like I said, guys, I think it was the final question that determined her placement, not necessarily overall performance. First runner up was Maureen. Okay. Once again, I was like, I get this not quite answering the question during the finale. It really seemed like that final answer seemed to weigh heavily with the judges this year. Now they created new titles. So Miss Universe, Philippines charity went to Victoria and interestingly enough Miss Universe New Zealand offered Victoria that title to go represent them at Miss Universe and she turned it down because she feels she is a Filipina and she wants to just represent the Philippines essentially so uh who knows maybe she's going to continue with this title and then compete at another pageant in the Philippines in the future maybe I'm not sure then Miss Universe Philippines tourism was Katrina and I mean, guys, I think it was just close between the top two. And I feel like it's one of those situations where, you know, one judge is the determining factor. I think that if it had been a different judge, we could have easily seen Katrina win with these performances. It wasn't necessarily something that you do wrong that I tell a lot of my clients. Sometimes it's just something that another contestant did right that the judges are like, oh, that's the one for me. That's what happens sometimes. Uh, but Beatrice, congratulations, beautiful performance. Just so impressed. And I cannot wait to see her at Miss Universe, you guys. I think she is going to look stunning on stage. I, I hope that her wardrobe is just as beautiful as it's been for this competition. Let's see what happens. We're going to see actually very, very soon. So thank you so much for watching. And if you want to see any other episodes, then you guys can check out my other playlists. And if you have any requests for future episodes, just leave those in the comment section below. I hope you've subscribed and then I'll see you next time.